Last time, you saw me complete the math SAT in just under 15 minutes and my solutions for the first part. Today, I'll be going through how I solved the second part of the math SAT. Alright, so let's move on to the next section. So, let's look at the first one. Again, slope-intercept form. These are in y equals to mx plus b form. Remember, b represents initial and the initial height is 40. Um, m represents change or rate. It's going to be 21x plus 40. Answer has to be b. Let's look at question 2. A flat fee of $5 per month for 100 text messages. That means it doesn't matter if you send 1, 5, 50, 100 messages. They're going to charge you $50 regardless. It's going to be a flat graph like that. So like that, you can eliminate c and d. Now, think realistically, if after that, they, after that they're charging a quarter for every additional text message, it just means uh, um, every additional text message after that, it's going to get more and more expensive. Since it's getting more expensive, it should go up, and so it should be A. Let's look at 3. Also very similar, it's about graphs, so let's just think properly. If he starts with this much and he eats popcorn, it's going to go down. But then if he stops eating popcorn, it's not going to change. It's going to be flat. He continues eating. It's going to continue going down. And then he spills everything, which means it plunges straight down to zero. So the only graph that would fit any of this is going to be B. Let's look at question 4 here. If x mi if 20 minus x is 15, what is the value of 3x? Very direct. So for x, subtract 20 to both sides. You should get negative x equals to negative 5. Flip the signs, x equals to positive 5, 3x, you multiply by 3, 3x equals to 15. Let's look at this one. For fx, they replace x with negative 1. Basically, replace x with negative 1. We've got negative 1 plus 3 over 2. Mm, simplify the numerator. 2 over 2, that would just be 1. This one, we just have to distribute the parentheses. 2x times x squared is going to be 2x to the power of 3. Remember, x when it lost if we mark. Because 2x is x to the power of 1. This is also to the power of 1. We, if exponents, when you multiply, we add them. So like 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. And then multiply with this one too. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. x, 1 plus 1, is going to be to the power of 2. That's why our answer here would be d. Let's look at option d. So um, this was a sampling question. Now, you have to think like, which option is the least biased? They want to estimate the proportion of all employees. So it means that for everyone, they aren't, dis they aren't um, picking based on age or um, pay or anything like that. So for example, D, creating a website. You have to think, um, the only kind of people that use websites are going to be younger people. What if they've got um, older employees that are not as technologically savvy? So it's not going to be D because it's biased towards young people. It can't be C either because they are going to survey the, the 25 highest paid and the 25 lowest paid. That's not all the employees. They have to sample everyone over a wide variety of different pays. So it's not going to be C either. Now between A and B, because they want all employees throughout the entire state. For example, like if you only select one store, it's going to be in maybe in just one town compared to each, so each store where they ask a bunch of different employees from every single store. This would give us a more, um, a better estimate compared to A because maybe, um, maybe the maybe quality of life is different from town to town. So maybe they might have a uh, different opinion. So it's not going to be A because it's location based answer is going to be B. Let's look at this one. They want to know how much more the Ian deposit each week than Jeremy. All right, let's look at Ian. Ian, can you see from week zero, from the, from the zero to one, in one week, he went from 100 to 200. This, this means in one week, he saved $100. For Jeremy, in one week, he only went up by 50. So Jeremy, in what, every week, he saves 50. Ian saves $50 more than Jeremy. Let's look at question nine. Hx equals to 2x squared. What is h5 minus h3? Well, h5 is going to be plug in x as 5. That's 2 to the power of 5. We will get 32. h3 is plug in x as 3. So we got 2 to the power of 3. We have 8. 32 minus 8. That would give you 24. Let's look at this one. 
sampling again. So what this means is that he feels that 23% uh, of the students in the population, so he thinks the, that it would be about 23% here, but he thinks he might have a margin of error of um, 4%, so like left to, so like for example 4%, left and right, that would be 19% to 27%. So that's why you eliminate A and B, it doesn't mention it. So because he says that he thinks it's 23%, it's close to this, if, a if he's only this much percent sure, it means he's um, if someone's only 19 to 27% sure, they're not very sure, are they? It's not going to be C, it has to be D. That's why it's going to be D. Um, Alright, let's look at this. So when you could have discount, so a 40% discount means you pay 60% of the price, because 100 minus 40, so 60% is equivalent to $18. We want to find 100%, but there's no direct way of going from 60% to 100%. So we can go from 60% to 10% first, just divide by 6. 10% is equivalent to $3, and to go from 10% to 100%, we multiply by 10. 3 times 10 is going to be $30, and that's why it's going to be C right there. Oops, I missed out the question 11 right here. Alright, so the formula for mean is add up everything, the sum of every single um, option, and then you divide by the total number of options. So for example, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 is 21. And there are twenty and there are six different numbers. So 21 divided by 6 would be 3.5. Same for the bottom, you add up every single number here, you'll get 21. And there are six numbers divided by 6, again 3.5. That's why they have the same mean. You can strike out C and D. What standard deviation means is how far apart are um, the values. So if you look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is much more um, spread apart compared to 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5. If I, try, if I try to draw the graph, it looks like this instead. So that's why the standard deviations are different because A is more widely spread. Alright, let's look at this. So typically this is how the questions I like to call um, wordy questions. They're there, all these. You honestly don't have to read this because it's very self-explanatory from the graph. Instead, just go straight to the question. Don't waste time. Which of the following colonies showed a decrease in size every two weeks? Decrease in size every two weeks. You just have to pick. The, you just have to check the the bar keep decreasing. A, it, yes, it keeps decreasing. B, yes, it keeps decreasing. C, not really because from zero to two it went up. So it's going to be A and B. Colony A, colony B, not colony C. One and two only. Let's look at this one again. Just go straight to the typically long questions. Go straight to the last sentence. Ratio of week 8 to initial treatment. Ratio week 8 to initial treatment. All you have to do is figure out what is week 8 and what is initial treatment. Week 8, A is about 20, B half of that, 10, C it's about 50 because in between 60 and 40. That all adds up to 80. Initial, A is 80, B is it's come in between like 60 and 70, so 65, and C, and C in between 50 and 60, 55, add all of that up, 200. 80 is to 200, if we simplify it, you can use a calculator to actually simplify it, if you want to keep it as a fraction, 80 over 200, you would get 2 is to 5, that's why our answer here would be 8. Alright, circular cone, alright, so has a volume of this, so if you see right circular cone and they talk about volume, your first, uh, first, your first thought should be, Volume of a cone. It's already given on the first page of the formula sheet. One third pi r square h equals to volume. All you have to do is plug all uh, your variables in. One third pi r square times two equals to twenty four pi. And then solve for r. Strike out the pi's first, and then solve for twenty. And then solve for um, r square. So to get rid of the two, you Divide by 2 to get rid of the 1 third, you multiply by 3, so 24 divided by 2 times 3, you would get r squared equals to 36, and r must be 6 then, because 6 times 6 is 36. Alright, let's look at this one. So this one is the one where it was a bit, um, it was a long question. So let's look at this. I want if this population of city x was, so what I did here, I remember, was I drew a table, x and y. City X was 120 people in 2010. It increased by 20%. If it increased by 20%, it means it's going to be multiplied by 
because increase, so it's going to be greater than um, 1. So 120 times 1.2 is 144. And they also say that x and y are equal. This is also 144 right here. Now, if it decreased by 10%, that means this is equivalent to 90%, and we need to figure out what 100% was, because initially it was 100% and decreased by 10%. So 90% is equivalent to 144, 10% is equivalent to 16, because if you divide by 9, and 100%, um, you just have to multiply by 10, 160. That's going to be our answer for C right here. Volume of um, a sphere is given by v equals to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. We need to isolate for the radius. We just want r, so you just got to think how do we get rid of everything bit by bit. Get rid of the denominator first by multiplying by 3. 3v three equals to 4 pi r cubed. Now get rid of 4 pi by dividing by 4 pi. So you will have 3v over 4 pi. And actually at this point, you can already start to eliminate answers, not A, not C. And then to get rid, to just get rid of the cube, you do a cube root. And that's why our answer would just be D. Alright, let's look at this. So, oh, like this, um, like I said, just go to the last sentence. Probability that a user answered always, given, did not answer never. So basically we're looking for always over people who did, did not answer never. So if 31.3% 31 of people answered never, everyone um, everyone else did not answer never. We know in total everyone's 100%. So all I have to do to find rarely, often and always is do 100% minus 31.3%, which will give you 68.7%. Uh, so just have to plug everything in. Always is 30.9 over 68.7. So it's always, if you don't know which way to plug it in, like is it 68.9 over 30.9, probability will never be greater than 1. So if you get an answer greater than 1, it's probably the other way around. So yep, yeah, always, so yeah, it's typically always if they say something, given something, it's the first thing on top and the second thing at the bottom like this. And this would give you, if you press your calculator, 0 0.45. All right, let's look at this. If you look at this formula, this is the vertex form of an equation. Vertex form of a parable of um, a quadratic equation is typically given by y equals to a x minus h square plus k, where uh, h k is the vertex. That's why it's called vertex form, and a represents like concave up or concave down. So if your a here, can you see a is actually negative one? That means it's going to be concave down. And this is a maximum. If you look at here, h is 3, k is a. So that's why your vertex hk is just 3a. That's why our answer is going to be d right there. Alright, let's take a look at this problem. So here it's given that the maximum number in this data set is 84. And then they add a new number and the new maximum is 96. And they're asking which of the following must be 12 greater. So if you notice, the maximum increased from 84 to 96, it increased by 12. Now, um, mean is measured as total over um, number of integers. So in this case, we can't tell for sure if it will increase by 12. The median technically is not affected by the maximum. It's the position of the middle number, so also not affected. However, the formula for range is always maximum minus minimum. In fact, the range is the only one that's going to be directly impacted by the maximum. So that's why in this scenario, the answer is C, range. Let's look at this problem. This is a problem, it's a substitution problem. So if so, typically when you have a long story like this, just go straight to the last sentence. If Clayton uses 100 millimeters of the 20% solution, and we take a look, 20% is going to be Y millimeters of 20%. Basically, this question wants you to plug in Y as 100. So instead, we would replace Y with 100, 0 0.10x plus 0 0.20100. Um, equals to 0.18x plus 100. All you have to do is solve for x. Mm, distribute first 0.10x plus 20 equals to 0.18x plus 18. And then we just have to um, shift terms. 
So all you have to do is just 2 equals to 0.08x and hence divide both sides by 0.08 we will get x equals to 25 and that's why the answer here would be b let's take a look at this one now the thing is she invited double typically when we talk about linear functions they have to increase by the same number every year so maybe like every year she invites five more people or ten more people it has to be the same number so linear has to be same um, number same increase each year whereas an exponential does not have to be the same so the fact that she invited double the people she invited the previous years so maybe in one year she invited 30 the next year she invited 60 the year after she invited 120 that is not the same number it's not going to be linear now, how do you deduce? Is it decreasing or increasing? Well, if she's inviting double the number, she's inviting more people every year. This would be an increasing exponential. Let's take a look at number 23. So here we have this equation. So remember, um, this is all given in standard form, which is some um, ax plus by equals to c form. So if we take a look for the slope here, slope is rise over run from 0 to negative a, the rise is negative a. From a to 3a, the run is 2a. The slope here would be negative a over 2a, which simplifies to negative 1 half. Since our slope is negative, remember, if your slope is positive, your b would be negative. If your slope is negative, then your b would be positive. So in this case, we can already eliminate C and D. Since the question did not give us the y-intercept, we can't directly find out if C is going to be positive or negative. However, these two options look very similar. It's x plus 2y equals to something. So all I have to do is just plug in what is x, what is y. x plus 2y equals to a plus 2 times 0. So I'm using this first data point and we will just get a and hence our answer here must be a. Let's look at this one. All the options here are given in a slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. Now, if you look, none of them have b's here, which is fine. It just means that maybe this passes through the origin. But if you look here, the slope is a positive slope. So anything with a negative slope, we can eliminate. Same thing, find the rise and the run. 60 to 70, here is 10. 120 to 140, the run is 20. The m would be 10 over 20, which is just one half. Answer would be b here. Let's take a look at this one. This is systems of equations. They want you to solve for x coordinate, not the y. So the big hint is they want you to eliminate the y coordinate. How do we eliminate the y coordinates? We need to make them the same. So 0.15y instead of 0.15y, we need 1.5 y in state and that means we have to multiply it by 3 because 0.5 times 3 would give you 1.5 so multiply the entire equation by 3 4.8x plus 1.5y equals to negative 3.9 all we have to do now is just eliminate 2.4x and 4.8x would give us 7.2x negative 1.5y plus 1.5y would just give us 0 and 0 0.3 minus 3.9 will give us negative 3.6. If you just divide both sides by 7.2, you will just get x equals to negative 1 half. That's why our answer here would be a. And let's look at this one. If you look, all the options look like they are in exponential form. Exponential form typically is some um, p, which is initial times 1 plus r, which is the rate in decimals, to the power of t. Just by looking at this, we can already eliminate a and b. They do not fit. We know there's a 1% annual increase. Now, if it was an increase, um, this would be 1 plus r. If it was a decrease, we would subtract instead. So, because it's an increase, we are expecting a number in here to be greater than 1. So the only option that fits would be D because C would uh, indicate a decrease in state. All right, let's look at question 27. So here we have two thirds 
um, 9x minus 6 minus 4 equals to 9x minus 6. Actually cut that. So, Alright, let's look at this question. So this is an interesting question because they are not asking us to solve for x. They're asking us to solve for sum of 3x minus 2. In addition, if you look here, the question's already given as 3x minus 6, which is actually 3 times greater than what they're asking for. So we're going to do a substitution here. We're going to say that let 3x minus 2 be sum u. So if you notice, 3 times of this would be 9x minus 6 would equal to 3u. So instead of actually trying to solve for distributing and solving for x and then plugging it in here, it's, it's much quicker to replace everything with u's instead and solve for u. So instead, we've got 2 thirds times 3u minus 4 equals to 3u again. Uh, multiply these, this would give you 2u minus 4 equals to 3u and solving subtracting u on both sides we would have negative 4 equals to u so here our answer is just a because remember they're not asking for x they're just asking for us to solve that all right let's look at this graph this is given in factored form and factored form looks like some a times x minus r times x minus s where A would indicate concave up or down, R and S indicates the x-intercepts or the factors. So let's look at this one. Since there is no A, well technically there is an A, but it's positive 1, it's positive, so it would be concave upwards instead. So just from this we can eliminate A and B, we have to keep C and D. Because, so because this will actually give us the x-intercepts, we can form two equations, x plus 3 equals to 0, x minus k equals to 0, and we will just get x equals to negative 3 and x equals to k. The correct graph will have x-intercepts of negative 3 and k. Even though we don't know what k is, this is already enough information to solve it because in C, this x-intercept is negative 2, which is not it, but D has an x-intercept of negative 3, and that's why our answer here would be D. Let's look at this one. They want to find 1.88. 1.88 is given as the slope. So typically, um, slope is going to be increase or decrease, depending if it's positive, increase or decrease in y per 1x. So in this case, increase, because it's positive, in h, because instead of y, we have h here, per 1L. So if you hear me during the video, I kept muttering increase in height, increase in height. The only one that mentions an increase in height is going to be D. Let's look at number 30 here. So here we can just draw a straight line down. They want us to solve for B. If you can tell this on the right side, it might be a rectangle, it might be a square, but we just know this angle is going to be 90 degrees. And just from the diagram, you can tell angle B has to be greater than 90 degrees. You can eliminate D. Now, the next part, CD equals to one half of AB. That means if CD was some x, AB would be some 2x because AB is twice the length of CD. And this might get, this might be the confusing part, but um, because this is x and this is 2x, this actually corresponds with the special triangle 30, 60, 90. So the formula for 30, 60, 90 triangles looks like this. And just because of this, you can conclude, well, then this must be 30, and hence this must be 60, because the formula is very similar to a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Hence, angle B is just 90 plus 60, and we would get 150 right here. Okay, let's look at um, the open section. So here we know each apple costs 65 cents. 5 apples would be 5 times of that, so you just have to do a 65 cents times 5, we would get $3.25. So if she spent $3.25, the amount she's left with would be $8 subtracted by $3.25, which would give her $4.75. Since each orange is $0.75, cents, we just have to take this $4.75 and divide it by 75 cents. We should get 6.33 with a recurring 3, but since they want it as a whole number, it would be 6. So it doesn't matter even if she got 6.6, .6, because you can't buy like half an orange. Um, so even though it sometimes, so what if you got 6.6 .6 with a recurring, you still have to round down because um, you only have enough to buy 6 whole oranges. 
Alright, let's look at 60 to 32. So, all angles in a triangle must add up to 180. That is the triangle sum theorem. So, A plus B plus C must equal to 180. Since we know A is 34, 34 plus B plus C must equal to 180. We are solving for B plus C here. So, all you have to do is shift the 34. We would subtract 34 on both sides, and that would give us B plus C equals to 146. Let's look at this one. So this one's, um, there's a trick to solve this question. If you know the mean is 600, typically you just have to see how far are the other numbers from the mean. Typically they need to, to be some distance away and they typically cancel out. <clears throat> For example, 1200 is 400 less. 700 is 900 less. 2000 is 400 more. So you can see that the 400 and the negative 400 will cancel each other out. So, typically we need everything to cancel out. So that means that x has to be 900 more in order for the 900s to cancel out. Because we need the mean to be um, that much, so you need it to be exactly, you need them to all cancel out. So in this scenario, x would just be 900 more than 1600, we would just get 2500 as our answer right here. This formula here for 34 is um, direct variation formula, what direct variation means is that when something uh, when something increases, for example, when x increases, y will increase by the same amount, or when y or when x decreases, y will decrease by the same amount. So if you look, they're asking for y. So you can look at a first. Sorry, I mean x. X is going to be a, but now x is 2a. That means x was doubled, it was multiplied by 2. So remember, because it, there is a direct variation question, so if x was doubled, y would also be doubled. So 17 times 2 would be 34, just because this is direct variation. All right, let's look at this. Because it's infinitely many solutions, we can tell the left side must be exactly the same as the right side. They have to be the same. So let's distribute the left side. We would get ax plus ab equals to 4x plus 10. So if you let's compare the things with x's. Here we have 4x and here we have ax. Just by comparing these two, you can already conclude a has to be 4. So now, because of that, we can say ab which are the things that are left, have to be equal to each other. If AX equals to 4X, AB must equal to 10. And AB equals to 10, and we already know A is 4. 4B equals to 10. To solve for B, we just divide both sides by 4. B equals to 2.5. Let's look at this problem. So we've got... Um, We've got um, this quadratic equation and a line, and they are say they're talking about intersections. So when you talk about intersections, your first instinct should be equate the two equations together. C equals to negative x squared plus 5x. When we, if you look at this, this is a quadratic equation. Quadratic equations typically have to equal to 0 in order to solve them. So try to shift everything to the same side so you can add x squared, subtract 5x to make the right side be 0, add x squared subtract 5x, we would have x squared minus 5x plus c equals to 0. Now, the thing is, exactly one point. So, exactly one point would mean that the discriminant is going to be equal to 0. When the discriminant is greater than 0, it means there's two answers. When the discriminant is equal to 0, there is one answer. And when the discriminant is less than 0, it means no real solutions. So in this case, because it's exactly one point, the discriminant has to equal to 0. And the formula for discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So in this case, we just have to compare this, our equation here, with a, b, and c. a, b, c. Remember, we just have to compare it to your ax squared plus bx plus c. So just by comparing here, you can tell a is 1 because x squared has no coefficient. b is negative 5. And c is just c. So you have to plug everything in. b squared would be negative 5 squared, which is 25, minus 4 times 1 times c, minus 4c equals to 0. Add 4c to both sides, you would get 25 equals to 4c. 
And now divide both sides by 4, then we would have c equals to 25 over 4. Alright, and let's look at the last two questions here. So typically when I when we do conversions, it's best to draw a table. 200 miles per one hour. So we know the conversion is one mile equals to 5,280 feet. So if you want to convert from miles to feet, you need the miles to cancel out. Right now your mouse is on top, so in order to cancel out the mouse, we need the other mouse to be on the bottom. One mouse goes on the bottom here, 5,280 5, feet goes on top here, and we can strike out the mouse then, so that this would be in feet. Same thing, one hour is equal to uh, 3,600 seconds, so we would put the one hour on top, because right now our hours is on the bottom, so that we can cancel them out to remember. The units need to be opposite, so one on top, one at the bottom, one at the bottom, one on top, and 3,600 goes to the bottom. How we would multiply this? We multiply the top two numbers together, and then we multiply uh, the bottom number together. So that 200 times that would give us um, 0, 0, 0, 6, 5, and 1, 0. Um, this much, 1,056,000 and then the denominator would be 3,600 and when we divide, you should get 293.33 recurring but since they wanted to the whole number, we round down 293, that would be our answer. Alright, and let's look at this one. Um, so the trick question, so the trick to um, memorizing distance, speed and time formulas, daylight savings time. Distance equals to speed times time. Half a mile, 0 0.5 for 200, for at 200 miles per hour for some time. So just be careful. Right now our units are in miles per hour, so the time we're going to get is in hours. We have to convert it to seconds later. So in order to get t by itself, you have to divide both sides by 200. You should get t equals to 0 0.0025 hours. Remember, one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. All we do is just multiply by 3,600 3, and you should get 9 um, seconds for your final answer. So that's how I managed to complete the SAT math portion in just under 15 minutes. Feel free to leave a like or a comment if you have any questions or if you'd like me to tackle a different test or a different problem.